FIFO versus LIFO in accounting. If you didn't know the difference, well, I've given you some of the differences in a prior video. If you didn't see that video, I've linked it up here. However, today I'm going to show you FIFO versus LIFO in action with some example numbers. So if you're going to find that helpful, then stick around to the very end because I'm going to show you how this makes a big impact upon profit. And we all love profit, don't we? I'm Professor Capco, and I'm here to help make this clear and easy to understand for you. But first, I'd like to say that I believe something great is going to happen for you today. Let's get going with the video. All right, FIFO versus LIFO. We're going to look at March cost of goods sold. So let's look at a chart here that I've created. And we had a beginning balance of 100 units, and those units cost us $20 per unit. These are units that are purchased by this company, this fictitious company, and we're having it in our inventory to sell to customers. So the units at the beginning of March, we had 100 of them, and in a prior month, we had paid $20 per unit. That was a total cost of $2,000. So our total in inventory at the beginning of March is 100 units at $20 per unit for a total of $2,000 in our beginning inventory. Let's do our first purchase. So on March 1st, 150 units are purchased for resale to put into our inventory. Price has gone up a little bit. Now we're paying $22 per unit. So the 150 units at $22 each is $3,300. We just multiply the number of units by the price per unit to get the total cost. We add that into our inventory with the prior 100 units at $20 per unit, and we're adding to it 150 units at $22 per unit. So our total cost of our inventory right now as of March 1st would be $5,300. Let's no sales have occurred as of yet. Now let's move on to the next one. On March 10th, an additional 50 units are purchased, um, but the price has gone up some more, and that's why probably only 50 units were purchased at this point. As you can see, prices have gone up. We're all familiar with that, with inflation as it is right now. So prices went up, so the 50 times the, 100, times the $25 per unit is $1,250 that these 50 units were purchased for. We add that to our inventory that's been sitting there. So add the additional 1,250 units or $1,250 worth of units. And our units in inventory now cost $6,550. I think it's time to start selling some stuff, don't you? Well, let's sell some stuff. On March 11th, we sell 50 units. All right, so we're going to sell 50 units that are sitting in our inventory. Now, it doesn't really matter for our calculation of cost of goods sold how much the units were sold for. However, many times you're given that information. Maybe it's 50 units at $100 per unit. Don't be distracted by that number. That number is super important and it will be important to calculating your gross margin and your ultimately your profit. But we're gonna ignore that right now for these calculations and see how much our inventory is left and how much our cost of goods sold is for that sale. We're going to start out with FIFO. And again, FIFO is first in, first out first in, first out. So in other words, the first in inventory units that we have, which in this case would be our beginning balance, which we're sitting there the longest, they've been sitting there the longest, we're gonna sell those first. And those are the units we're gonna sell at whatever price that we sold them at. So on March 11th, we're selling 50 units at and we're going to take from the oldest units first. And those, we have 100 of them sitting there at $20 per unit. We only need 50 of them. So we're going to take 50 of those. And those cost 
$20 per unit. So if you multiply the 50 units times $20 per unit, that's our cost for that sale. Our cost of goods sold for that sale is $1,000. Now, if we sold it for, you know, say $100 per unit, then each unit only cost us $20 per unit. We'd be making $80 per unit. But we're going to ignore that right now. All we're figuring out is our cost of goods sold. Let's update our inventory. We have sold 50 of the first set of units, so we only have 50 of them left. So we have 50 at $20 per unit, and that is now we only have $1,000 worth of those. We still have the full 150 units at $22 because we haven't sold any of those yet. So that's 3,300. And we still have all 50 of the units that we purchased at the highest price there at $25 per unit. So that is still the $1,250 per unit. Let's go ahead and see how much this is in our inventory. We have 1,000 and we're gonna to add to that the 3,300 and we're gonna to add to that the 1,250 our inventory total as of that date is $5,550. Let's sell some more. If you're finding this helpful so far, please smash that like button. We need to add that to our inventory uh, to help get this out to other folks that need it. All right, on March 13th, we're gonna sell 150 units. Again, I'm going to ignore at this moment how much we sold them for. And the reason I'm ignoring it again is because I don't want you to confuse that with the cost. The sales price is our revenue. The cost is our expense, our cost of goods sold. So we have 150 units total to sell. So on March 13th, we sold 150 units. Again, we're using FIFO, so we're gonna start with the first units in, in other words, the oldest units, and keep working our way down until we get to the last set of units. So we need 150 units, so we're gonna grab the first 50 from here at $20 per unit. So we have 50 at $20 per unit. And so that is $1,000. Then we need to grab some more because that is now gone. We need to grab, we still need another 100 units. We're going to grab them from here because it's first in, first out. We're going to grab them at $22 per unit. So the 100, 100 units at $22 per unit is $2,200. We can add that together, so it's $3,200 is the cost for the March 13th sale. If we want to know our total March cost of goods sold at this point, we can add the $1,000 to the $3,200, and that's going to give us a total March of cost of goods sold of $4,200. That's under FIFO. We're going to keep that in mind because we're going to compare that to our next way of doing it. But let's go ahead and update our inventory while we're at it, because that would be good to know for any additional sales. We no longer have any of these at $20 per unit because they were the first one sold. So we have zero at $20 per unit. So that equals zero sold 100 of these, so we only have 50 of those left, 50 at $22 per unit. And if we do that, that's if we 50 times 22 is going to be 1,100 units, uh, $1,100. And we still have the 50 that we paid 25 for. Those are still stuck here. We haven't sold them yet. That's not gonna change for the moment. So that's 1,250. So we can add that 1,250 to our 1,100. And that gives us a remaining balance in our inventory at this point. 
of $2,350. Of course, there may be some other transactions uh, throughout the month, but let's switch over now to LIFO. So we're going to take a look at what this would look like under LIFO, which is, if you know what it is, put it in the comments. It's going to be last in, first out. So this is the reverse of FIFO. The first part of it is going to be exactly the same because this is where we're just buying things for the inventory. And so I'm starting with this. Everything is remaining the same as it was under FIFO. Now we're going to have the same sales. Nothing changed. We're still selling 50 units on March 11th. We're, we're not going to care about what the sales price is at the moment because that involves revenue. We're just going to worry right now about our cost. Where do those 50 units come? So we're going to sell 50 units and it's last in first out. So that means we're going to sell the last ones, which were the newest units, those, and we have 50 of them sitting here at 25. So we're going to sell all 50 and those cost us $25 per unit. And that means our total of 1,250 is our cost of goods sold for that first sale. So far, so good. Let's look at our next sale. Again, we're not changing the amount sold and I'm not worrying about or changing the amount we sold them for. So all we're changing is our cost and that is purely driven by the accounting decision, whether it's FIFO or LIFO. So we are gonna sell 150 units. Let's go ahead and update this before we get to that because I don't wanna make it confusing. So we have 100 still at $20 per unit. So that's the 2000 here. We still have 150 at 22. That's the 3,300, but we sold all the of those. So we have zero at 25. So that's zero. So our total at this moment before our March 13th sale is we're back to here, the 5,300 that's in our inventory. We're selling another 150. LIFO means we're working in this direction. We've sold all of these at 25. So we're going to go to this and we've got 150 sitting there. So that is going to entirely satisfy this sale. So this sale is 150 units at, these were purchased at $22 per unit. And that's all of them. So that's 3,300. All of those are sold. So we can update our inventory. We still have 100 at $20 per unit. That's our 2,000. And all of these have been sold and all of these have been sold. So this is zero at $22 per unit. And we have zero at $25 per unit, zero. So our total inventory right now is $2,000 at cost. Notice that differs from our inventory under FIFO. We had $2,000. $350 sitting in inventory. So that is going to make a difference on the bottom line right there. Because remember, inventory is an asset. So our assets are higher in this matter, in this particular case, under FIFO than under LIFO. That could be easily different if prices were going up or down. If they're going down, it might impact it. So that is just, I'm just showing you that there is a difference there. Let's find out what our total cost of goods sold for our month of March. We have the 1,250. I'm going to add to it the 3,300. And that gives us a $4,550 our cost of goods sold. That's March. Remember what our March cost of goods sold was under. This is under LIFO. What was it under FIFO? 
200. So we have a marked difference between our cost of goods sold under LIFO and under FIFO. This could make a difference in the amount shown for profit, but ultimately, hopefully, we sell all of our inventory throughout the period. So it works out in the end. It just as we move along, it may change the amount of assets that we have, or it may change the amount of actual um, net income that we wind up having because this might change our gross profit. It is an accounting method. It is something that's chosen the on multiple, multiple factors, and that's beyond uh, the scope of this video. But one thing to know is they can't just change it in the middle of a month uh, just to make their profit look better. They have to stick with the method that they're working with uh, so you can compare them. So that is how you do those. And mind you, this is an accounting method. They may be, whatever the units are, they're just grabbing whichever ones they grab. They don't necessarily be, won't necessarily be grabbing the oldest ones in FIFO. Although if it's something like milk in a grocery store, you probably want to sell the oldest ones first. Um, and that way that they won't go bad before you sell them. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you have, I'd really appreciate it if you would hit that like button and subscribe. We have more videos coming out on these and other subjects. I'm here to help you. So if you have other questions, go ahead and put them down in the comments. And we also have ways you can support the channel listed in the right, right in the comments or right in the actual um, description of this video. So take a look there and you can support this channel. But until next time, keep your grade alive and subscribe.